Good morning! Morning! Welcome back all you rags, to all you shinies. Welcome to the most mediocre podcast in the Star Wars universe, the 1313 Podcast. I'm Tom. I'm Jackson. And, and there will be no Lothcat impressions of Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know what there is? What? Visions. What? Let's go! Visions Let's came go. out! I'm here for it. We are. I'm so, so here so. for it. Visions is here. Visions is out. As of the time of recording this, Visions would have come out not even 24 hours ago. Yeah. And we watched all nine episodes yep. of Visions. So. This is recorded on Wednesday for this Friday special. Yes. Yes. I'm so excited. So, first and foremost, let's go through our initial reactions okay. to Visions as a whole before we That's, go into each episode yep. individually. Is going to be an in-depth thing about Vision. So, yes, if is. you haven't seen it, there will be spoilers. So spoiler make sure alert! You do, because it's really good. This is a spoiler-heavy episode. We're going to be talking about content, little Easter eggs, everything mm -hmm. like that throughout yep. the whole episode. So, just know that. Now, Visions, Jackson, what do we think? Okay, so I we've already been extremely hyped for this to come out in the first place since since the very first reveal to this day to this day. <laughs> no. So we've been extremely excited for Visions, and I will honestly say that it met and exceeded my expectations for sure. I feel like episodes that I thought were going to be lame were actually good. Yep. Because here's the thing. You know, I saw the stylized uh, episode of Trigger and the trailers and stuff, and then I saw kind of like some of the low points, and I was like, that might be like an okay episode. You know what I yep. mean? But the episodes that I thought were going to be bad were legitimately great. And I so they ended up good. making my list for my top three, which I will go over later. See, I didn't even have a top three because I was watching each and every episode and I was just so taken aback by how oh, yeah. good every episode was so good. Like even the ones like from the trailers where I was like, I probably am not going to care much for that one. Mm -hmm. I would watch them and I would just be like, because they were so good. Every single one, like the art style, just the different messages, different quotes. I did notice an overarching theme with every episode. Every episode had the line, I have a bad feeling about this. Well, because every single Star Wars property has that quote in True. it. So technically, because it was done by every different studio, it had to have that catchphrase. <laughs> because that is in every Star Wars show and movie yeah. somehow. Yeah. So... I mean, I, I did pick up on that by, like, the fourth episode. I was like, wait a minute, they keep saying that line. So, yeah, so, I mean, if you're ready, I yeah, mean, let's, let's hop into right each episode. So, All right. we are going in order of how Disney Plus has them listed. Yes. So, number one, The Duel by the studio Kamikaze Duga. Oh, you have the studios listed, too? Yep, I do. So. More prepared than me. Now, I think a good way to go about this is we... Talk about the episode. Yep. Then we rank it, or rate it out of five stars. Why? I thought it would be fun. I mean, if I'm going to be honest, I would give every... I mean, I mean, every episode, in my opinion, gets a five stars because I'm coming true. off just watching this. Like, yeah. I uh, got uh, had to come back here to deal with some stuff really quick, and I just finished watching it, and now I'm right here to record this. So... I haven't really had time to think, so I guess I'm not really, like, ample to, like, criticize ah, much. Yeah, I'm still, I'm like... I'm sorry, so I... You can do that if you would like, No, I'm not going to provide that. I'm also... I can accurately do that. I'm also new content biased. Okay. I'm in a good way. Every episode, mm -hmm. I would say, is five out of five. And we want to do episode. everything correct for you guys. Every so single episode. So we're not trying to be mindless drones of people, but I did, again, legitimately really, really enjoy this. I will rewatch it when I get back from my training. Because it was very I actually, I was at work tonight and it was slow and I actually was tempted to throw on the episodes and watch them again nice. because I wanted, because again, they are actually really good. Yes. Now every episode I think ranges from 13 minutes to like 22 minutes. Yeah. I think so it's, it's also a good, perfect, in my opinion, chunk of time because there's a lot of Star Wars content where I only have 20 minutes to sit down and watch something. So why not watch an episode of Visions? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, so. Let's get into the first one. The uh, Duel. The Duel. That was very, very nice. And I guess the only complaint I might have about that episode specifically was 
I was watching it from a distance. I wasn't like watching it like super close on my screen and whatever. So at points it was a little bit hard to see the design, but at the same time that could have been easily fixed by the medium in which that I watched the show. I really liked how it was like almost like a manga, but you were watching Dude, it live. It was, that's a good way to put it. It was like a manga. Because that's what I was thinking about. I was like each scene right here could be like clipped and put in a manga. You know, It really I mean? could. Like read through because it was that well done. And it was, the animation style was so like. I agree. It felt like every frame was hand drawn mm -hmm. to look different than the last, you know? Yeah. But also like the way that like fabrics moved mm -hmm. and different things like that was so natural. Yeah. It looked so good. The attention to detail was insane mm -hmm. on everything. Now, the main character, I yes. didn't catch his name. They don't give his name. He's not a Jedi, and he's not a Sith. He's like a Sith hunter. Yeah. Sith killer. Which and is a very cool idea, because I completely forgot from the trailers and the concept art that this dude had a red lightsaber, in a sense. Yeah. It's a sword. Well, because they advertised him as, like, one of the heroes. Exactly. But then to see him, obviously, like, the Sith are, like, kind of, like, screwing with these people in the town, but then he's like, I also am a Sith, and it was like... Oh, yeah. like this yeah. is a nice twist. I'm not a Jedi. I was like, oh, he's not a Jedi. I was like, yo. But uh, but yeah, I noticed that the storm. So the, I, the stuff that I took notes for was like really like minute stuff, very like detailed mm -hmm. things. Yeah, no. Um, the stormtroopers, I guess you would call mm -hmm. them. Were, were like some had first order stormtrooper yeah. armor and some had imperial stormtrooper armor. I thought that was really cool, and I really liked the way that it was. Because then again, you know, everything was kind of based around Japanese culture. And I'll, I'll go into some of my notes on, on some other episodes. Like a lot of, a lot of stuff had um, very, very like Japanese-esque yeah. or Japanese 100%. style. Like the fights being, some of the episodes had like shorter fights. Um, and so that was like very like samurai movie. Yeah. But that's also how it would be in Japan. Um, so, uh, I mean, I really liked the masks. I like, did too. I like the stormtrooper yeah. would just be like from here, like down or like completely different, like amalgamations of the armor and stuff. I thought that looked very, very yes. cool. Um, I also thought that the Sith design mm -hmm. was sick. Her mask was awesome lightsaber umbrella a lightsaber umbrella but it's cool and the fact that it just like comes off mm -hmm. and then it's like her regular lightsaber i thought that was really cool mm -hmm. because I, I thought oh she's gonna have this light uh, umbrella lightsaber the whole time mm -hmm. but no she did not um i loved how the lightsaber for the main character was shaped like a katana yep i loved that that was awesome um Common theme. and the way that when it would sheath was how it would yep. deactivate was so cool like i agree i thought that was a really cool idea i also liked a lot of the different species you saw ugnaughts mm -hmm. trandoshans doug there was a doug that was piloting that probe droid i did see that yeah, i was yeah, like yeah. it's a boba um and then there was that that one protocol droid um but the one from rebels dude is what i think of the tactician <laughs> the republic tactician droids who is it that, like, they kill some of the stormtroopers and, and then they just get absolutely mowed down after that? I was like, oh my god, that was It was brutal. so funny. <laughs> yeah, it was almost, like, laughable. Mm -hmm. I also really like the moment where the child stands up mm -hmm. and is, like, yeah. standing up to the, um, the, I guess, yeah, the raiders, I'll call mm -hmm. them. I definitely felt like Visions, in my opinion, had some really good bits of wisdom here and there throughout the episode. I ground some get quotes. Into that later. Yep, I have some That's quotes from some of the made. episodes. Yeah. Um, I mean, other than that, like, there's nothing else I can really think of off the top of my head for this episode. Which is fine. It was so. It was a very good opening <clears throat> to Visions. It like made me want to watch the rest of them even more than I already mm -hmm. wanted to because it was so good. Because here's a common thing I found as well, and here's my prediction, is that every story we saw wasn't finished. Everything yes. had an open ending, which I feel like makes it so that they could make a Visions uh, season two. Please. Continuations to all those stories. And if they did, 
Please. Let's, please. I want it. I want it, please. <laughs> Bro, what the fuck was that? <laughs> I don't know. It's been a long day. I'm really tired. Have to it. It's like, what, 9 something, 30 at night? 9.30 at night. <laughs> and we really said good morning to the audience. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I'm good to pass yeah. on that episode yep. now. 100%. Now, a big surprise by Studio Colorado, mm-hmm. Tatooine Rhapsody. I really Bro, enjoyed it. I didn't that think was I was going to like so, it at yeah, all. Same. I thought I was like, oh, that's probably one that I'm going to be like, eh, on. but no, it was so good. And then mm-hmm. um, also, side note, uh, I just want to say, I, I simply don't care if you watch anime subbed or dubbed. I, I guess that's like a big thing in the anime yes, community. Okay, so. I, I, yeah. I Again, like, I don't care because I'm still getting the same content. It's literally, going? huh? Where's this going? I'm just saying it's only the language because I've seen a lot of discourse today on the internet around um, like people saying that you can only watch it subbed and, yeah. if you want the full experience, but I disagree. Which I, again, I literally do not care because as some, as an avid anime watcher here and there, <laughs> it's literally up to interpretation. Avid sometimes. Because yeah, sure. Sometimes subbed is better than dubbed, but otherwise it's literally vice versa. But at the same time, just watch whatever you prefer. It literally doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And so I kind of had the feeling as well. There was a, definitely a few scenes where I felt like the characters' mouths were still moving a bit. Yeah. So I definitely feel like, yeah, because I didn't realize that they might have also had a Japanese version instead yeah, yeah, of yeah, English. Yeah. So I might check that out because I'm a fan to see like what it would sound like, obviously coming from the original studios. Right, the voice actors, the Japanese ones. 100%. I feel like that would be really cool. And that would be a dope experience, but that's for another time. Now, Tatooine Rhapsody opens up. I see clones. I'm like, dead, bro. Bro, that's bro. The- <laughs> I'm seeing, I don't care that they're dead. I saw clone troopers. I was like, <gasps> I said, an anime clone. Let's go. <laughs> but, but dude, I was like, oh my God, there's clone troopers and battle droids. Oh my God. Um, a lot of these did touch on the fact that the Republic existed and fell. Yes, yeah. I really enjoyed that part because obviously from watching it, I was like, okay, this is all going to kind of be based in OT. And I expected that because I would think that the gentleman that came up with these ideas for the shows grew up with the OT. And so like that's kind of like their sweet spot or whatever. Perfectly fine with it. But to see them incorporate like a bit of like the past and the fact that in a lot of these the Republic existed before. Yeah. And that it fell. So they were kind of still incorporating that like key part of Star Wars lore. I thought that was very interesting to see. I thought it was dope. I agree. I but really yeah, so that. the main character is a Jedi. Mm-hmm. Or was a Jedi. He was a Jedi Padawan. Jedi wannabe. Jedi. We'll get into that. <laughs> there's, a, there's Jedi wannabes in the other ones. Yeah, I agree. Now, Boba Fett. So, okay, so they're having the concert, right? So they're having their concert, and, like, they're playing for people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boba Fett walks in and says, I have business with this slug. And I just started pissing myself. I, went, I just was like, let's <laughs> go! I was, I was laughing so hard because I was like, I was like, oh, my God, he just called him a slug. Like, that is just so funny to me. Jacob isn't here to complain about what I have to say. But Star Wars did it right when they had the original voice actors come back for pieces of this. Because Marvel yeah. didn't do that for what if. And I don't care that those people might have busy schedules, bro. But it's like, bro, you couldn't have the original voice actors for most of these people because it would probably cost you too much money. Sure, people like Tom Holland are probably making the Spider-Man movie. Sure, other people are probably doing stuff. But it's like, when Star Wars did that, I was like, that really goes to show that they wanted to, like, do that it justice. also just goes to show again this is going to be an overarching theme the amount of attention to detail and I the agree. level of care because at the end of the day i would consider this visual art mm-hmm. this is 100%. not this is not just a show this mm-hmm. is not again this is if you're a casual star wars fan you could absolutely watch this and, and like you could dig it like you could get into Facts. it Facts. but as an avid star wars fan as a lifelong star wars yes. fan you can appreciate this as a form of art. This mm-hmm. is so much more than just a TV show or just a Star Wars anime. Mm-hmm. Like, it is... And as we get into these other episodes, because I definitely... I, now that I'm starting to think about it, I definitely have a favorite. Mm-hmm. But... Um, okay, okay. But, yeah, it's, like, it's it's so mm-hmm. cool. Like, it's so, so cool. I agree. But, um, but yeah, so... Um, I... I loved all the characters in Tatooine Rhapsody. Yes, and I didn't think I would. Funny. I didn't think I would. I know, because one of the very few things, sorry to get sappy, 
but it's like there are very few things will like still like get me like very emotional and anime is one of them and that i there was so many episodes and even like this one where like there were moments tugged at my heart and i was like that was well done because i'll admit it when i watch like a lot of american shows too or cartoons sometimes i don't feel that experience but it's like i feel like especially in japan they've refined writing so well to the point where they can capture any emotion that they want you to but also this is really a way for the the anime studios to really flex their muscles oh, on their, sure. on their storytelling flex. abilities oh, mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. on the western world because you know there's a big audience for anime in america but at the same time like a lot of americans and a lot of star wars fans are not attuned with or um aware of what anime really is Mm -hmm. and it's art like at the end of the day like in japan anime is seen as a form of art Mm -hmm. and that's why the studios go so crazy with the visuals and then when you have a compelling story on top of that so yeah but i I put a note i was highly impressed with this episode i was um I wanted more. Like, I wanted more. I, you know, like, I wanted more from everyone. When they're playing the live show at Mos Espa and Boba's, like, tapping his foot, jamming out, I was yeah. like, that's so good. I dug it, bro. I like, I very much specifically like that style of punk. Because, I mean, it's like, I feel like that's what it was kind of capturing, like, punk and, like, rock and stuff. So, I really, really do enjoy that. That's kind of, like, another sweet spot for me for music. So, I was like, oh, there was also, that's like, nice. the Figure and Dan band. Yeah, I was that also was watching funny. it on the hollow thing. I was like, <laughs> this one was so there were some that were like in the Star Wars universe. Yes, but this one was very grounded in the existing Star Wars universe. I you agree. know, yep. Um, again, I was just I loved it. Mm-hmm. I loved it so much more than I thought totally. I would. Um, and I'm very impressed. And this was where I was like, because the first one was good, and then the one that I didn't think I was gonna like as much, mm-hmm. I liked at the same level as the first one. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, okay, I'm good. I'm just so excited to watch the yeah. rest. So then I watched, um, the next one was Twins. the twins by trigger. Yes. Now this one is phenomenal as well. hundred percent trigger went, let me flex my muscles real quick. Because <laughs> as someone who I really enjoy trigger is a studio because I've got my water bottles. Yeah. That's fax. Where is it? I don't know. My water bottles was somewhere. Do you want me to find it? Okay, just, just talk about your thing. I'll, I'll find Okay, it. so essentially, as someone who's seen, like, Kill a Kill before, I was very much impressed, again, with what Trigger had to do. Watching it reminded me a whole lot of that, like, specific art style from when I first watched it. And I, re- I thoroughly enjoyed the action in it as well. It was, I mean, the combat was very cool. I really liked the idea that they were using, like, uh, Dark Trooper suits to give themselves more power. Yeah, because I mean, obviously, um, that be that's like the original Dark Trooper, but then they figure out that make it a whole machine, and then it's a whole lot stronger than a person. I thought that was super dope. The armor designs were very, very cool. Very Darth Vader esque, but also very yes. like original. Like I, I got Inquisitor vibes. Mm-hmm. I felt like that could have been like a Star Wars What If, like, yeah, because oh, that yeah. was a hundred percent What If the. Uh, two people born in the light side destined to bring good were born into evil instead you know i really I, enjoyed that concept i really liked so the stormtroopers when i saw the stormtroopers they had white guns with orange mm-hmm. like accents and i was like oh nerf guns yeah <laughs> you know, the stormtroopers have nerf guns um but uh the droid the the, the protocol droid mm-hmm. that follows um the yes. sister um sounded like the voice of az i agree it did remind me of that a bit. And I feel like that was intentional. A hundred percent. So now when it talked about them being like how they were created, I was like Sith cloning, Sith cloning. Yeah. Cloning experiment. Is this a sneak peek for the bad batch? No. The bad batch. Is it? I don't feel like it no, is. No, I don't think it is. But it was definitely, I mean, it's like, sure. That would have partaken in a Star Wars universe where they did figure yeah. out how to really do that. Right. But yeah, I was, I liked that they pulled that aspect of star Wars, which is a newer aspect, like yes. the dark side cloning technology. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess if you like red air to the empire and all that, then it's not really that new, but yeah. you know, um, I really liked, again, you mentioned the armor designs. Yep, so I, I can't, that was super duper dope. Now I noticed they had all kinds of ships in the hangar bay, including a Jedi starfighter from episode three. Mm-hmm. I saw, and I also saw, um, a couple other ships 
that caught my attention, but I didn't write them down because I was taking notes as I was watching, but yeah. I also was trying to be fast because I didn't want to miss out on a second because every second is beautiful. So I'm like, exactly. Cause I'm going to be honest. I took mental notes for all of these instead of written notes because I wanted to enjoy this. I knew I wouldn't have time to watch it through again to take notes before we recorded. So I wanted to give like as raw as an interpretation I could. I'm not screen crush, so I'm not going to get you every Easter egg in the video, <laughs> but I'm going to do my best to remember all like the parallels and stuff. Speaking of parallels, the last Jedi, did Dude, you catch that? The Holdo maneuver. Yes. That's I had a note. That was a note that I had there. That I thought was that was dope. really cool. That was dope. And then it, like it stayed there too, just like in the movie, you know, like so that like you could really. Feel and again, that. it looked equally as stunning as the live action version. <clears throat> I agree. In this anime version. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, dude. That is, that was, and again, I put a note, stunning visuals. Like this one, yeah. every single one of them did, but this one in particular, I was like, oh my goodness. <clears throat> do, stunning. or do not. There is no try. But yeah, so like, uh, so a couple other things. Um, I love how the brother had like extendo lightsaber. Like yeah. it could change the length, which again, like I, I like that because that's something that's like, it's a thing in canon that you can change yeah, the length of your lightsaber. Say, wasn't that like originally mentioned before that you can do that like yeah. ezra's you can change the length of the lightsaber you're right he did do that before yeah and mm -hmm. like it's a thing but like no one ever talks about it and just to see him do the extendo lightsaber yeah to kind of start a star while going like at hyperspace speed that was pretty funny but uh when she grew the six arms of the six lightsabers mm -hmm. i was like oh general grievous on steroids yeah, like that, that was, was really cool um and then i loved our duo he was pretty funny. he was so like he had so much pizzazz to him he was like the kind of character that R2-D2 would fill. But yep. he was different than R2-D2. I feel like he had more spunk mm -hmm. in a different way. Like, R2-D2 is, like, sassy yeah. and spunky, whereas yeah. this droid was, like, very matter-of-fact and, like, does the things that the main character won't do, you know? Yeah. Um, and then a quote that I had from this one uh, is where the brother says to the sister, you're free to choose your own destiny. Mm -hmm. Now, and that's something I really liked was, like, as long as you're alive you are able to choose, you know, and there are certain like situations in our lives mm -hmm. where, you know, there that's not the case. So I don't need to be here. See you, Jackson. Have a good night. Um, no, I'm joking. But yeah, like it, and I think that's something that a lot of us forget, um, like in our day to day lives. Like, you know, I'll go through like points in my life where like, I'm just complaining in my head. Mm -hmm. about, oh, I gotta do this, and I gotta do this, and I gotta do this. But then I'm like, wait a minute. I can choose how my day goes. Exactly. And if I have a good attitude about it, even if it's something I don't want to do, then, like, it's going to help me get through my day. And it makes every day easier. Mm -hmm. That's not that's to say. I still do my fair share of complaining. Yeah. <laughs> but, Ain't nothing wrong with that. But, dude, like, again, like, it's... There are so many messages, and as we go through, there's a couple more that I really, really liked. Yep. Um, but, again, this episode... Like S tier after S tier after S tier episode. In my opinion, yes, that is the truth. It was so good. It was so good. I was just, yep. I'm just sitting here and I'm just, I'm just getting so excited talking about it. I know. I'm so excited to talk about it because I know everybody else that I know didn't watch it. Because, and I know there were haters on this. I know there were people doubting this show and I know there were people Keep saying it. hating because it's Dude, good. honestly, if y'all want to hate and we can have a little niche community around this, that's fine by me because I am completely fine being yep. in. I will again. I will die on this hill. Visions is hype. Visions is S tier Star yep. Wars, dude. Yep. Canon or not? Because it's not yes. canon, is it? No, 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 none of it's canon, dude. Now, all right. Are we ready to move on to the next one? Correct. The Village Bride by Kinema Citrus. This one hundred percent was an episode that when I saw this originally, I said, this is not going to be interesting and I'm not going to enjoy it. However, I will have stuff to say about this later, but this was an episode that I would consider to be one of my favorite. Yes. I really, really enjoyed the episode. It wasn't action packed. It wasn't super stylist. You know, it had a really good story it was just that I anime. really liked. Yeah. yeah it, it was just this is these people's lives and you know and they saved the day and it was it was really good i was 
I was so blown away by this one. The Magina, that's what they call it, the Force. I think yes. that that's basically what the Force is in that episode, the Magina. Mm-hmm. And I was like, how it's like the people had a connection with the Force. Mm-hmm. And it's cool because it shows that all living things have that connection with the Force, yep. whether they're Force users or not. Mm-hmm. I thought that was very neat. Now, they talked about how there was previous imperial presence you see that by the destroyed probe droid yeah previous but there was also previous separatist Separatist. presence in the planet and i was like whoa speaking of separatists when we had anime battle droids that acted like the clone wars counterparts that made me so happy to see i was like it's just like the thing when the droid talked that's when i was like no way I know, that made me smile so big. I was so happy. A big thing in this one, I feel like, because again, you kind of touched on, like, the animation quality. I'm not going to say it was worse. That's not the right word. It mm-hmm. wasn't as stylized as, as the trigger. As as all the other ones that we had seen previously. Yes. You know, all the other ones were extremely stylized. This one, I made a note, the music in this episode. 100%. Was, like, so captivating. Yep. And it, it just pulled you in mm-hmm. to, like, you just... I, I don't know how every single one of these episodes made me care about all the characters. No, for real. In no time flat. I would just be in the episode just, oh no, like what's going to happen? I'm like, wait a minute, how am I feeling like this already? No, for real. Because the episodes are so short. I totally agree with you. They did a very good job in each episode. Yeah. Like you care about the characters. Because that's what anime does well. (laughs) But yeah, dude. So like. So I won't um, the bug eyes. <laughs> I had a quote in this one <laughs> that I like too, where um I think it's so there's the Jedi, yes. and then there's that guy that she's with who's I don't he's not a force user. He's just like helping her. Yep. You know? I think he's just he helped her after the Jedi Purge, is mm-hmm. what the context of that is. And um he says, That's all war is, nothing but loss. Yep. And is this loss? No, I'm kidding. That's that's a meme reference, but <laughs> that was <laughs> a terrible one too. <laughs> I know, um, but no, like it's it's true. Like when you think about it, like especially like in our lifetimes, like we've learned so much history about war. We've learned so much, and you know, you learn about the victories, and you know, you learn about like the triumphs of the victors of war because history is written by the victors. Mm-hmm. But when you like actually look at the numbers. The amount of lives that have been lost in, like, just World War II, milli- tens of millions of people, so many innocent people, just dead because mm-hmm. of a conflict over, like, like honestly, like, a war of ego among, like, different world leaders. Mm-hmm. Like, and so all these people got just became cannon fodder for different reasons. And it was just mm-hmm. having that quote really, like, gives you a good context of, like, being able to see the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. You know, from like a macro scale, instead of just looking at it like my team won, your team lost. Mm-hmm. There's there's a there's a cost, and that's Yoda talks about it too. Mm-hmm. You know, when they're in the Clone Wars, in the Clone Wars show, Yoda mentions like I'm not sure if like there is a winner to this, like anymore. Like it seems like it's never gonna end. Yep. But yeah, that was kind of my my point on that. I really liked that quote. Yeah, but the again the ending had me really happy. Really enjoyed it. Again, another thing. Well, I should just stop saying that because, again, every episode seems like it'll have a part two. I Again, I think that a lot of these were set up. I'd be okay if they didn't. I think that they kind of wanted to see how this would get received. Mm-hmm. And I think that it was overwhelmingly positive. I would agree. Thankfully, I was able to go on TikTok today and not see any bits of it. But I know that like in the coming days, I will see more and more people talk about it online. Obviously, this is yeah. the initial release for it. So we'll see you later. But, uh, but yeah, so, like, uh, one thing that I noticed is, you know, that, that power vacuum. You know, the Separatists came, the Separatists went, and the characters, the villagers, talk about it. Mm-hmm. Like, the, the Separatists came and went, the Empire takes their place. The Empire comes and goes, and then these raiders take their place. So, you know, wherever there's this power vacuum, and again, this is, like, this is, like, mature messaging. Like, this is something that, like, adults can sit and talk about. Mm-hmm. You know, again, like I know my 11 year old brother has been so excited to watch visions. You know, he's been watching, um, uh, what is it? He's been watching demon slayer recently. Yep, that's a um, he's been one. super into that show. And, it's um, good. yeah, but he's been, 
he's been watching that like a ton. Mm -hmm. And so I know he was super excited for visions and I know like, this is good to expose young people to these, these messages, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thinking from a different perspective, you know, from a certain point of view, from a you know, certain point of view, <laughs> but yeah, like one power replaced by another, a couple other cool things, battle droids. We already went over that. Yep. The, um, the Raiders, the alien ones had clone blasters. They had the DC 15 A's. Mm, I didn't notice that. Yeah, they did. Very nice. Um, and then the, the ship that they're on is a very Millennium Falcon esque, like Corellian built. That's mm -hmm. kind of the vibe I got. Um, when the Jedi pulls out that yellow lightsaber katana, I was like, I was, I, I literally sat, I was sitting on this bed right back here and I was like, Whoa! <laughs> I just I thought that was so cool because I wasn't expecting yellow. It's always blue or green yep, or no red. You know, it's never like those other colors like purple or yellow or white or black. And I'm always like, dude, the yellow lightsaber, that was sick. And again, it had the very katana look mm -hmm. to it. That was um, perfect. And then the ship that the Jedi flies in is a Z95 Headhunter. I did see from that. From the Clone Wars. I was like, that's a Clone Wars era ship. I was like, it isn't, it had the X Wing noises and effects. But I was like, it isn't an X-Wing for once, in my opinion. But that's just obviously personal prequel bias. But I was like, that's so cool. That's cool. Now, I want to get into, and again, I keep looking at all these and going, oh, this would be a top three for me. But I, I can't pick. I really can't. I do. I will go over my top three at the end. Did So we're good on that last yep. one then? The next one. The Ninth Jedi by Production IG. That was very good. Dude, I have so much to say about this one. You do? Dude. I... So much. So, um... Oh. Yeah, I have, I have a lot of notes. Oh. I, have, I have all of my notes on every episode here. <laughs> um, but yeah, so where is it? Um, uh, there we go. So this, this one had like a, a verbal prologue, which I liked. Mm -hmm. It was different. It set it apart from the other ones. And again, it was cool to see each studio had their own unique take on this kind of idea of star wars um so there was like that verbal prologue kind of explaining to you what's going on yep. this one gave me if anyone that's like listening to this or anything has ever read the dark horse star wars comics mm -hmm. like about the jedi purge with um the jedi sui Choi where Darth Vader like sets up a meeting. He's trying to find Obi-Wan and he sets up a meeting to get a bunch of Jedi together and he ends up killing them all um, with the help of the 501st. Um, it gave me very dark horse comic vibes. Like, and I liked that. Like I, it like threw me back to my childhood a little bit. Cause I would read those when I was like six years old. Mm -hmm. um, again, I, I was, I really liked how the main, the main character, I guess the, the, the lightsaber smith's daughter had that mm -hmm. black lightsaber i thought that was very interesting i thought it was an interesting concept as well that a lightsaber would be like i guess you could consider it to be black or like colorless and whatever colorless that's a good way yeah, to put it because that's what how it was described but then it gained a color when it fit the using i really liked that the lightsabers were made to interact with the user i agree i thought and, that was a very interesting concept and again like it it shows like where they end up being like it was a trap for Sith. It was a, it was a it was not a Jedi, but like a light side force user setting up a trap for the Sith. Yeah, I and so that was interesting. It made it really easy because the, we all know that the Sith are they excel at concealing their presence. Yep. So it made it really easy for the the ah oh man, what's his name? The Maje Maje. You're there, but Maj like Dong or get, something. Yeah, people get the point. Yeah, but he he needed a way to detect Sith versus Jedi, mm -hmm. and that was really smart. I agree. The Raiders that take away um, the lightsaber smiths place like, reminiscent yeah. of obviously a New Hope. They looked like Embo. Their hats. Oh yeah, 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 that's a good point. I like that. Um, and then, uh, the Phil really said, please, <laughs> <laughs> dude, um, the, the droid, <laughs> the droid reminded me of a mighty bean. <laughs> like, <laughs> do you remember, do you remember, <laughs> do you remember mighty beans? I'm not even gonna, mighty I, have, beans. I have the Star Wars mighty beans at my house, bro, in the collection. <laughs> dude, I remember 
mighty beans and oh the droid the droid just was shaped like a mighty bean and i was like <laughs> <laughs> that's all I could think about. And I giggled to myself when I thought about that. Um, that's funny, though. Now, something that moved me was seeing the the, the Jedi, mm-hmm. but seeing all their reactions to seeing a lightsaber mm-hmm. for the first time since the Purge. I agree. Because at this point, the Jedi are extinct. You know, we learned that from the the one the one guy, the young kid who is like with the, I, I'm not going to try to say his name. Um, but the, the lightsaber smith, the guy who gathered everybody mm-hmm. there. I also like that he hid inside the droid, by the way. That was a good thing. That was very smart. This, was funny. this episode was very intelligent, mm-hmm. you know? Um, when they're fighting now, um, what, well, I guess when she's getting chased on the speeder, she does like an Obi-Wan pose. Yep. I saw that. That was dope. But um, that droid, the pilot, drinking coffee. That was so That was hilarious. Fun. I'm on my break. It reminded me of, um, I can't remember, the uh, tactical droid from Rebels. The unionized <laughs> droid. <laughs> it reminded me of him a whole lot. And the fact that he'd be like, why do we have to do oh, this um, now? Oh, uh, AP5. Yeah, AP. It reminded me of AP a whole lot. That's why I really thought it was more funny. I really liked him. I liked that droid. Impressive <laughs> move. <laughs> yeah so like so monotone yeah i really like that um again um i also read some of the old republic comics Mm -hmm. like from like a long time ago and in that the main character um gets ambushed by a bunch of jedi who are council members who end up killing their padawans Mm. and they're sith like they are they're they're part of the sith and they just disguise themselves as jedi masters and so they're like basically like spies within the jedi order but there are these high-ranking jedi masters so nobody's going to believe this this lone padawan who survived this slaughter so he's a fugitive mm-hmm. um but yeah that's what the kind of the vibe that it gave me when everyone started fighting and it, i realized like five of them were sith i was like that came out of nowhere <clears throat> oh and my i'll be honest opinion, i didn't see that they turned on the lightsabers and they were red and i was like <laughs> colorblind moment i was like is that supposed to be red <laughs> but no it didn't even hit me at first i saw they were red and i went Oh, cool. And then I went, wait a minute. They react Hold to their up. personality. Wait a minute. Some name right. Some name right. But yeah, um, I was like, Sith? Yep. Um, and then uh, I like how it was a plan to kill the Sith. Because at first, yes. it was a plan to get kill Jedi. Jedi. To get Jedi. But then he found out that the Jedi were being killed by these mm-hmm. Sith. And the Sith were taking their place. When the hot Sith dies. No. What, the dude with the long hair? No, the chick. The chick? Oh, the blue-skinned one? <laughs> I thought we was gonna... I thought you just... He's a handsome no, man. No, he's no. a handsome man. What do you want me to say? No, the dude was good. But no, that's the... Like, she died and the jig was like, the hot one just had to die. <laughs> <laughs> it was like... Me, me, me. <laughs> I really need to get a button for that. Yep. But, dude, this episode was brutal. They were just slashing yeah, each other. It like, was actual, in my opinion, it was the first time in a while we've seen what could be considered to be violent lightsaber combat where you slash someone and their body part comes off. You saw a little bit of the same stuff go throughout the rest of the series, though. Like, limbs get chopped off here and there. But I was like, that's a very interesting take because that's not something we got to see in Rebels Obviously, because it was meant to be dumbed down for kids. Right, of course. So that's fair enough, in my opinion. I totally understand the decision to do that. But, dude, like, this was, like, it was so brutal. I know. It was, it was like, like, all the hits had some gravity to them. The you know what I mean? to death, I went, When he got disintegrated. No. Was, <laughs> but, no, like, and then, like, the ending. I want more! Like, that's what I, that's what my thought, I have all caps. I want more at the, the end Jedi of that episode. temple is a lightsaber. Yes, dude. But again, that was cool. I don't want more because it was brutal. Mm-hmm. I want more because the story was was compelling. Yep. And they really set up a story to go somewhere. Yep. So I really would like to see this one in particular. Nine different Star Wars animes. I would be. I would have to quit everything so that I could <laughs> consume my life with anime. Um. Now let's talk about Tob One by. Science Saru. Now, this is right. one that I really, really thought I wouldn't like. I agree. I mean, I thought, I mean, going into it, I was like, okay, this could be a little like, mm. 
Yeah, like I, 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 seeing all the trailers, I was kind of turned off by this one. Yeah. But then after I watched it, I was really impressed with it. I thought it was really cute. Again, yeah, like the like Tatooine Rhapsody. Mm-hmm. I was very, very impressed by it. You know, um, but uh, as an individual who went through a unfortunate Sonic phase with his brother in elementary school, this episode is very Mega Man-esque because we also really liked Sega. So, like, the old dude is supposed to be, like, the dude, the guy who makes Mega Man, the robot, is supposed to be Oh, really? That's the design choice. Okay. A hundred percent. It's almost... I want to say it's Dr. Wily, but I forget if that's the villain. I'm not, like, into Sega like I was anymore. So I cannot be accurate with this, and I apologize. But if you know, let us know in the comments. Now, this episode... There's a couple things that I want to point out. Like, I mean, the first thing is that this episode reminded me of how I was as a child. Watching T.O.B. 1, who we find out is Toby, after a while, is his name. Um, you didn't know that. What? Nothing. No, I I, I, I didn't pick up on I'm just it. playing. <laughs> I'm dense. But yeah, so, uh, <laughs> no, like, Toby reminded me of me as like a small child Mm -hmm. and it really brought out that little kid inside me um for like my passion for star wars and it was pretty like it was it was like almost like an emotional moment i haven't really tapped into like my little kid self watching any kind of anything in a long time I, I, I watch a lot of stuff you know i'm, I'm an adult now mm-hmm. so like i watch a lot of stuff from an adult's adult. perspective right young adult same thing whatever but i'm a grown man I i'm, I'm a man decision. you heard but, me mom i'm a man i can go to the grocery store by myself i can buy some milk from the gas station <laughs> <coughs> i know the Sorry. expiration date but i remember what kind of milk we buy <laughs> but yeah dude like this episode really brought out that little kid inside me and i, I really i really felt i felt for toby mm-hmm. during the whole episode um when he goes up looking for CO3, is that his name? The droid that he's always working on? I forget, dude. I think it's CO3. Um, <laughs> there are drawings of the whole Skywalker saga. In the mix of those drawings in the as attic. well, you can see that there's drawings for visions. So there's the one scene with the twins. That's the really? only scene that I, that I saw. I saw because Obi-Wan was... versus Grievous. Oh, that could have been it. Oh, interpre- that's what you thought it okay, was. Okay, because I interpreted that as the scene from Visions. It could have been Obi-Wan and Grievous, 100%, because I didn't see any other Visions references, in my opinion, besides that. So maybe it could have been a potential homage to the studio, or it could just been, again, just showing a little bit of the prequel era, which I thought that was a cool detail. I thought it was a cool detail that they had the drawings of the X-Wings and TIE Fighters. Um, the other machinery. I really like that there was a Skyhopper mm-hmm. from Tatooine. I thought that we got to see inside of it though. Yeah. For once. And then he doxes himself and his his dad and gets yeah, his dad like, killed. This is a recall to any remaining Jedi. The no. Republic has fallen. <laughs> the temple is no longer safe to go to. And the mechanical Vader was like, No hate on Jacob, but that's totally something Jacob would do. <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's true. You know it's true. If we were in that situation, you know that he would just turn on the comm and just be like, hey guys, here we are. <laughs> Jacob, I love you. We mean that in a loving way. Yeah, in an endearing way. <laughs> but anyway, um, then I saw the TIE Reaper that, was that the Sith cool. came down on. Um, uh, he reminded me of the mouth of Sauron that Sith did. Mm-hmm. Especially when he gets his mouthpiece chopped off. Yeah. He's got that big giant mouth and then there's no eyes. Big chompa. <laughs> big chompa. <laughs> That's all that bro, what? Because he had the big teeth, bro. It's like big chompas. <laughs> um, he had a bunch on a carrot. <laughs> I did like, though, um, when the professor says, one with the force and the force is with me. Um, I like that. I love that line. Ever since like Cheered Inway said it. More. Yeah, ever since Cheered Inway said it, I, I loved it. You know? Yeah, he's there, and then in Clone Wars, and then um, and then the Sith comes, um, you know, the mouth of Sauron comes yep. down, and Toby Chomper. wakes up, and everyone's dead. Yep, everyone. And it's weird because um, the professor's buried, mm-hmm. 
So it makes me wonder, did some of the surviving droids bury him and then deactivate? I feel like they just did that for, I don't know. Story's sake. Yeah, story's sake, because I don't think in a episode that you're particularly making for very small children that you can have a dead body of a father figure laying around. <laughs> I mean, episode four did it. <laughs> Different times, buddy. Different times. <laughs> but yeah, um, fifty years ago, I really liked that um, he finished his dad's work. I'm, I mean, I have I called him the professor, but it's his dad. Yeah, he no, finished I his really dad's work. That. I thought that was cute and sweet that he did that. Um, I liked the big message in this one that I got out of this one was that the power that Toby was looking for was inside of himself yep. all along. Um, he needed to find it on his own instead of somebody showing him that the power was within himself literally and, and it's it's symbolized by the the kyber crystal for mm -hmm. the lightsaber you know and he searched everywhere he was looking everywhere externally for his answer and he it was it was within himself yep. all along um that's a message that's in kung fu panda kung fu panda is one of my favorite movies of all time kung fu um, panda's lit. and that's another that's a message in that movie is is looking look within yourself Mm -hmm. to find the answers and you know it's a good thing for coming of age too i think it's a good message for kids you know um, like, there are a lot of kids who are in less than ideal circumstances all around mm -hmm. the world and i think for, for sure for young kids to see this especially because it's star wars like it gives them a lot of hope mm -hmm. you know like that their situation can be you know not ideal but they can still find it within themselves you yeah. know <clears throat> i like that the lightsaber was jawel to pars I really yeah really that, that design yeah, um, but yeah then uh then there was um when the the Sith came back he was in an Inquisitor Tie Fighter yes the prototype I did advanced see that. yeah 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 um and then when the Professor knights him as a Jedi mm -hmm. that was cool too didn't do the will of the Council part but there's no Council buddy by the will of the Force Jedi. I thought that was really cool, though. Um, and then, holy crap, that epic fight came out of nowhere. Did not see that coming at all, the whole episode. And then there was just this epic, epic yep. battle. And it was so cool, dude. I agree. I agree. Um, yeah, that, that fight was awesome. And, like, Toby was getting his butt kicked for a lot of it, too. Mm -hmm. But uh, he didn't give up, you know? And he kept fighting. And, that again, that's a very that's a very big message in anime is not to give up. Mm -hmm. You know? But, yeah, it was... It was again that episode blew me away. I was so impressed with it. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to move on to yes. the next one? The Elder, that by Trigger. That was another amazing, outstanding episode. Not only in art style, but in message. I feel like that was very, very heavy in message, and I really, really thoroughly enjoyed it. I like that it's in the High Republic era, though when all the Sith are supposed to be dead. Because, again, that's what I've been asking for. High Republic media. And I feel like that was the perfect, like, intro. It was good. If you're going to have a High Republic digital media like that. It was nothing wrong with it. I loved it. I liked how there was a lot of importance put on the Jedi Code. This yes. was very much about Star Wars Jedi. Yes. This was not, like, a different take on Jedi mm -hmm. this was this was very much a by the book Jedi episode yes um, I agree a lot of importance on that I love the banter between the Padawan and the Master um, Dan is the Padawan's name and I'm not sure if I remember the Master's name <clears throat> I cannot remember but, I forget if they say that but oh. no it was it was great like I love the banter you, they really do a good job of establishing a relationship um you can tell that Dan is in his late teens, early 20s. He's probably towards the end of his Padawan, you know, uh, stage. Mm -hmm. And he's still a little bit arrogant, still a little bit. But then again, that's kind of what you would expect from somebody our age. Mm -hmm. We still have, we have a bit of arrogance in us. For sure. Um, and, you know, his master is what keeps him grounded. But I don't get that dark side feel from Dan. You know, I, I get yeah, like he's like nudging towards the dark side, almost like Anakin does the entire time. Yeah. He's still like, oh, OK. Like he knows where he stands. Yeah. But, you know, he but he's never been in a fight with a Sith. Mm -hmm. he, he's eager because he's adventurous and he's young and he hates the boring stuff. And that's that's us. Like, you yeah. know, we can relate to that, I feel like, because we're at that demographic. Mm -hmm. um, those Vamgas, those beasts. Yeah. Isn't that the. OK. Isn't that supposed to be based off the beast from Mustafar? No, pardon, 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 Dathomir. 
the oh what are those things called i don't I think, think it's so. a real name but that's what so. it reminded me of it was from like jedi fallen order those yes yeah, from... they they looked cool and i was i was i was really into them i thought they were dope i thought that looked cool i agree um i thought they were cool i thought that the lightsaber designs for everybody were awesome especially the elders lightsabers how they were yeah. literally just red katanas yeah those were the sick. fight scene was like deliberate it, it reminded me a lot this time of when we saw ahsoka and the mandalorian you know it wasn't immediate it wasn't like quick 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 rapid pace but it was still like those deliberate actions were being taken this episode was extremely like the fights were very japanese a hundred percent it was it was quick it was very, you know, the thought, there was thought put into every move made. Mm -hmm. um, and this is very much how a lot of Japanese anime are. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and I, I was so impressed with the fighting. I thought it was, it was, it was quick. It was exactly what it needed to be. It's a mind game more than it is a power game. I could sit here and watch them clash swords all day long. But like to see like a quick fight by two masterful swordsmen. Mm -hmm. is is in my opinion it's better and that's why i like the battle of the twin sons yeah. with obi-wan and darth maul mm -hmm. because well obi-wan and maul because it was quick because it was all a mind game mm -hmm. um i didn't think the padawan was alive i thought they killed him. i thought he straight up died i was like dang i was upset really sad, i'm upset bro. <laughs> Fifty thousand on my head i can't accept um this episode also gave me a very uh 2003 clone wars vibe mm -hmm. tartakovsky vibe I agree. Um, I, I especially from the fighting and how quick the movements were, um, and the camera angles too. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that you know those were really interesting. This is an episode I feel like definitely had really impactful wisdom as well because it was uh, specifically talking about the dark side. Yeah, and I feel like in a way the dark side is the most powerful form of the force that there can be. But it's also be a perverted form of the force. Exactly. Because it's perverted and because it gives you power. Because when the master was talking about how, like, power is only a temporary I, I found thing. my water bottle. It was right here. Wow. Clown. Hunga, hunga. But the fact that, like, power is a temporary thing. That it isn't bad because those who have power should use it to defend those who don't. But then seeking too much power, it can lead to corruption but, and evil. And that's the thing is... is Anyone, anyone who gains power doesn't want to lose it. Oh, 100%. And, you know, like, um, <clears throat> I thought that, that was interesting, too. And, and again, I had a note. Power doesn't last forever, you know? The Master also reminded me a lot of Qui-Gon. I, uh, I was literally just <laughs> going to say that. It felt like a very Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan-esque episode. Yeah, I, I liked it a lot. I liked it a lot. And, again, I would like to see more from this, mm -hmm. this storyline. I agree. Now, we have two left. And yep. I know that you're going to be very excited about the next one. <laughs> Try to do the penny one. Lope Maybe. and Ocho by we'll talk about this more Gino the Studio. Bunny Girl! Uh-oh! That was the first note that I had on mine. See, the episode turned on and I was like, it's the Bunny Girl episode. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, I thought it, I legitimately did also expect the Bunny Girl episode to kind of just be like a flop. Just for me to be like, oh, bunny girl in it. Haha, -ha, funny. I it was one of my favorite ones. Yep, I totally agree. Because I felt very personally connected to those characters. Me too. Because of Jacob. Because I'm a bunny. I mean, whoa, sorry. And pause. Wipe that back. <laughs> Run that back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I felt very personally connected because of like the relationship within the family, you know? Yes. So, like, that definitely reminded me of, like, Jacob specifically. Um, so that's why I really, really was easily connected and I thoroughly enjoyed it emotionally. The de the design of the ships, yep. like the Star Destroyers, <clears throat> was incredible. So yep. hyper-detailed, so different than all the other episodes that we've seen. I was really, really, really into it. Um, I, I like the messaging about industrialism and imperialism. Yep. In this episode, this is a, again, this is more adult, like critical thinking messaging, but it's yep. also good messaging for kids to have. Um, I'm actually taking a class in college right now where we're talking about whether the British empire did more good than bad, or was it more bad than good? Um, because of things like industrialism and imperialism. Mm -hmm. And when they get imposed on places that don't, that are not necessarily asking for it. 
Mm-hmm. They just come in, and, and that's what the Empire does in Star Wars. Well, because, you don't get it because they were doing good, though. So, like, it was fine. I don't get what you're and saying. According and according to the sister, and according to the sister, they were doing more more good than bad. And I liked her father's response was just saying, like, that's just a fancy government word that they throw around, but yeah. they actually just want power. And I was like, yeah. And it's that's what's happened, because real-life parallel. And it comes to the question of, you know, do you fight imperialism and industrialism, or do you accept it? And, and I think that there's a difference between accepting it and having it on your own terms. Yep. You know, I think that, you know, you should fight for it to be done your way. Mm-hmm. You know, because I think that industrialism has been good, in, for the most part, because it's allowed us to have technologies worldwide that we would never have, I agree. you know, and, and it gives more access <clears throat> to everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, the way that it gets done a lot of times is unethical, mm-hmm. you know, and, and especially in, in the example of the empire in star Wars, in the context of star Wars, you know, you have, you know, the empire is, is how imperialism and industrialism can go wrong. You know, Mm -hmm. you're imposing power, you're imposing influence on these peoples that aren't asking for it. And so that you trick them into being on your side if they don't like you. And then you eliminate the ones who are fighting back Mm -hmm. because they're terrorists. You know, Um, I like how the father says dank Farrick. That's like the one curse word in the Mandalorian (laughs) that gets thrown around all the time. Yeah. Um, I also saw the patrol troopers from Solo. This had a lot of stuff from Solo. I agree. It was, I mean, again, this is another, this is an episode that had, like, good canon material from... A lot of canon. Like, the Empire and stuff as well. You know, so we had, like, instead of, like, stylized versions of Stormtroopers and everything else, it was, like, here's, like, the Stormtrooper police, regular Stormtroopers officers and, like, the machinery and stuff. It was legit, which I really liked. Obviously, it was a break from everything else that we saw. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. I liked the lightsaber. I... Was, okay, was it yellow? Or what color was it? Green. Oh, really? I think it might have been green. I don't remember now. Was I'm it... only asking because I'm colorblind. I want to say it was green. <laughs> okay, because uh, I thought it was yellow when it came out. So... It might have been yellow. I'm being honest with you. I don't remember. Holy crap, I don't remember. <sighs> That's okay. It was either green or yellow. It definitely wasn't blue. Yeah. And then watch it be blue, and I'm just like saying. I'm <laughs> just talking about my butt. It was definitely not blue. But... Um, yeah, like, uh, a couple other messages that I really like. This one had a lot of messages. Um, I really liked the messages of found family Mm -hmm. and how you don't have to be a, inheritance doesn't, the father says inheritance doesn't mean you have to be a a blood relative to Mm -hmm. inherit something. Yeah, because the sisters are like, that's mine. I was supposed to have it. It's like, well, look what you did. (laughs) But yeah, like. And then also, like, messages of understanding one another. Yep. I think that that's a good message, especially for us in our time. We really struggle to understand those who think differently than us. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's a good message to put out there. To have an understanding for one another, you know? I agree. Um, there were dark troopers. I Yeah, I saw that hangar. for a second. I was like... I thought that was super cool to see. And they were Mandalorian dark troopers. Yes, it was the full robotic ones, not the human ones, which very, very, very cool to see. I really thought that was so dope. I and thought we were going to see more, but it was only a scene or two, which still fine with. Still saw it like the clones. Still saw it. And again, awesome, awesome fight. Yep. Awesome I fight. I was so. Every episode had awesome fights. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, like. When the sister leaves, she's the ship that she's on looks like Corvus from Battlefront Two. I yeah, 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 yeah. ship. <clears throat> I really I love that design. It's such yeah. a cool ship. Um, it's like a courier ship, I guess you would call it. Yeah. But yeah, this episode again, great. Blew me away. Oh my gosh, I was so. I loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, now, are you ready to move on to the last one? Final episode, and then our top three. Where Akakiri, <clears throat> by Science Saru. That was a hundred percent anime adaptation of Anakin's story. Dude, dude, this episode, I had no idea what I was expecting going into it. And then the episode ended and I went, 
I have to have more. I know. Yeah. Literally ended, and me and my dad were like, whoa. So <clears throat> this one, it starts with the main character, who is, I guess, a Jedi. Yeah. He crash lands in a B-Wing. Mm-hmm. I thought it was I an did interesting, see that. interesting yeah. choice of ship to <clears throat> choose, you know? Um, a Sith has taken control of the royal family. Yeah. And so the the this, again, this kind of reminded me of Obi-Wan and, and Satine. Because before, mm. the, the reason the Jedi and, and the, I guess, the rightful ruler know each other yeah. is because he was sent to protect her world. Yes. And she, like, they kind of, like, fell in love, but then he went back to the Jedi Order. And he started having these visions of her dying. And we see the visions, and they come more and more clearly mm-hmm. as <clears throat> it leads up. It leads to the actual death of her. Dude. Which I would, did not expect at all because I kept seeing the visions. I was like... I thought he just had life. PTSD from his master dying or something. Yeah, that's but, what I thought. <clears throat> but yeah, dude, like, um, this had a huge Samurai Jack vibe for me. Oh, okay. um, Like, it, like uh, watching Samurai Jack as a child, this, this really gave me the vibe of Samurai Jack in a very good way. Nice. I really... I love Samurai Jack in this, like, really... It post-apocalyptic kind of scenario. Um, again, I thought the Jedi had PTSD, but it turns out he didn't. It was just a vision. And again, we see this all the time. When Jedi just like jump to conclusions about their visions, they end up fulfilling their visions. Yep. You know? Visions. Get it? Ah! Anyway. Like the show! Um, I love the seamless flashback. Mm-hmm. It was so seamless. <clears throat> to where they like had first met and they were like talking to each other, building their relationship. Um, the fight in this was very, I was kind of confused at first. Yeah. Because I was like, okay, you're supposed to be the Jedi. Like, why is nothing happening? Like you're kind of like weak, you know, like you're yeah. extremely rusty. It is because he was haunted by those flashbacks and the Sith looked into his mind yeah just like we've seen maul do we've seen kylo ren do it you know they looked you know we've seen the the grand inquisitor do it you know like look into his mind and kind of torment him like that and Mm -hmm. so then he's just full of this unbridled rage and he's just slaughtering all these dudes and he ends up killing the one he loves yep just like anakin but unlike anakin He's what a twist! To bring her back. What a twist! <laughs> I know. I was like, okay, this is definitely just like a mirror of like Revenge of the Sith. You know, he's gonna do all this work to get her back, and then they did bring her back, and I was like, oh, uh, you what? <laughs> you what? But yeah, dude, I was I was so blown away. Um, I liked the messaging of selfishness versus doing what's right. Yep. And I think that this whole episode, the Jedi's mind was clouded. Mm-hmm. And that's why they called him a fallen Jedi in the in the description of the episode mm-hmm. on Disney Plus is yeah he's a fallen Jedi because he has let his emotions control him and consume him yep 100%. and so I feel like because of that he is in a situation where he is willing to lend himself over to the dark side because of his love for another which again the Jedi forbid. Loving attachment. attachment, you know, loving relationships. Yes. <clears throat> so it shocked me at the end. It was, I was such a twist. And, and I, I like it. Again, I'm kind of a sucker for tragic endings. Oh, yep. Same. But <clears throat> but yeah, I think that about wraps it up for like as far as like our thoughts. I agree. Well, I'm gonna kind of jump into my top three. Your top three. <clears throat> okay. I think I could probably make up my favorite three right now. You're okay, you think you can do yeah, that? Yeah. All right, let me make sure I'm finding everything. Okay, so if I had to go from, for top three, number three, in my opinion, The Village Bride. Again, blew my socks it's off. a very good one. Very, very good. My number two slot is going to go to The Elder. That was oh, that another was one, re- too. Yep. But then my number one spot goes to Lop and Ocho. Like, hands down. Although we mean the Biased. Meme, Biased. We mean the about the bunny girl. But I legitimately enjoy that episode the most out of any other episode because of the messages and everything else. I think my favorite three okay. are The Ninth Jedi would be my third. Okay. I've, I loved that one. 
Um, my second favorite would probably be The Village Bride. And, oh, this is so tough. Like, again, I like, I Just love them Just because I didn't all. have one in my top three doesn't mean I didn't like it. I They're think my first really one, good. honestly... <clears throat> I think my first one is going to have to go to it's either the duel. Okay. Or it's Lopinocho. I think Lopinocho might objectively boss. It was just really good. Yeah. <laughs> like it was just that good. It was. <coughs> and I, I'm, I'm so blown away. Visions has yep. been, and, and I, I knew we knew we've been saying this since the beginning on this 100%. podcast. Yep. That visions is the thing we're hyped for. Visions is the thing that is going to be so because it's so different. I say it all the time. I love when Star Wars is different. I love when Star Wars like gets out of its comfort zone with its audience. Yep. And this is something that we needed to see so badly. The storytelling was great. The art was great. This mm-hmm. was awesome. This was exactly what we needed as Star Wars fans. And I haven't been so excited and then had my expectations so exceeded. Yep. With a Star Wars project, like, yeah, there was, like, the Bad Batch, there was the Mandalorian, but yeah. this was just, this is something different, mm-hmm. and I would love to see more. And if I really had one legitimate complaint, it would just be that I wish it came out week to week. Me too. Because binging it, don't get me wrong, was a lot of fun. It, it was. was really fun to be like, this episode was awesome, this episode is awesome, but I also would have liked to maybe have a slower pace. Me too. I don't... I like to digest it. Well, I guess when I really think about it, there is nine episodes. Is there really nine weeks until Book of Boba is scheduled to come out? Yeah. October, Uh, November, December. And then Boba Fett isn't coming out until... Oh, hey, look, I have the shirt. Boba Fett isn't coming at Book of Boba Fett. First episode is Christmas Day. Ooh. Well, it says this Christmas. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Christmas is on a Saturday this year. Um, I I would come out the Wednesday before. I'm obsessed with Christmas. Christmas is a great. Um, but yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, midway through November, it would have been finished. Well, I guess maybe at the same time they didn't do that because some of the episodes were like so short. True, true. I mean, they were only like fifteen minutes a piece. Some of them. Which again, I can totally see. I don't know what executive decision was made to do that, but. At the end of the day, I'm not crying and complaining about it. I'm really not. I really enjoyed watching Visions. Oh, it was awesome. <clears throat> um, I want more. I want That's more. That's another reason I guess I might be able more. to More! More! Yeah. I, I just... I, I'm so satisfied. And I'll watch them again and again and yep. again and again. And it's just... Oh. I'll keep watching them. Why are you doing this to me, Lucasfilm? They pull it out of hearts. doing stress. this to me? <clears throat> But yeah, so I think that that wraps up our thoughts on visions. On visions. Yep. This has been a journey. It was We're a so journey. glad. And we hope you guys really enjoyed it as much as we did. Please uh, feel free to comment down below on what you thought. What was your top three? Let's get some discussion going in the comments too about different things that you might have liked. Maybe yeah. some things we missed because again, we just just watched it. We just watched it. Yeah. Today. But as of the time we post it, I'll probably have watched it again. And I probably will be the only one that can respond to comments because yeah, you'll be the only person to respond to comments this week. Cause I'll be gone. And you have to handle all the posts too. That's all right. That's fine. We can do it. So we will see you all. Um, on Sunday, we have our burner episode or not Sunday, Monday. Monday I was like, fellow on Monday, what? our burner episode that we recorded long ago. It's actually so funny. It was so awkward. I, when I was editing it, like, you're super quiet and very, like, stiff. And, like, I'm very, like, serious for some reason. And even Jacob is very, like, held back compared to how he is now. Yeah. Again, we're just still trying to get comfortable in front of the camera talking. That was only, like, the fourth episode we ever recorded. <clears throat> oh, yeah. We recorded yeah. that extremely early on. Uh, yeah. But but uh, we are, we'll see you on Monday. Mm-hmm. And then we will see you again in the future. This has been... The 1313 Podcast. The most mediocre podcast in the Star Wars universe. Until next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.